A wonderful day everyone. Let us give the limelight and view the lives of Saint Anthony de Padua, Saint John Paul II, and Saint Alfonso Maria Fusco for the part 3 of the class patron saints vlog. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear Holy Saints of God, we join our prayers of praise to yours this day. With you, we sing of God's mercy and celebrate God's incredible love. Teach us to live as you lived, always thinking of others always recognizing our weaknesses, always rejoicing in God's gifts, always closely following Jesus. Blessed are you, happy are you, all you holy saints of God. Pray for us that we too may someday be among God's holy ones. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A blissful day, everyone. I am Miss Marian S. de la Cruz, the advisor of Grade 10 St. Anthony de Padua. St. Anthony de Padua was the most celebrated of St. Francis of Assisi's followers and had the reputation of a miracle worker. He was also declared Doctor of the Church. In arts, he is shown with a book, a heart, a flame, a lily, and the little child Jesus. Let us know more about the life of Saint Anthony with this vlog specially made by my grade 10 Saint Anthony de Padua Academic Year 2021-2022. Sir, may I ask, who is your class patron? Saint Anthony of Lisbon, known to many as Saint Anthony de Padua. Before we start, sir, what do you want to share to the viewer? So, I hope that we may guide you to learn more things about our patron saints in this documentary presented by the class of Saint Anthony de Padua. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Saint Anthony, model of great holiness, help me to live as a worthy son of God, faithful to the promises of my baptism. You know how serious are the dangers and difficulties of my life. Grant that I may overcome all the temptations to evil and have the courage to witness to my faith. To obtain for me from our divine Savior, art that is capable of loving God above all things, and open my soul to generous and sincere love of my neighbor. Help me to be willing to assist and serve anyone who is in need. Encourage me by, by your holy example so that I may be your most open and receptive to God's perfect and all powerful love. Amen. Glory be to the Father, to the Son, to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Our Lady of Perpetual Health, pray for us. Saint Anthony de Padua, pray for us. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. In the year 1195 in this month, which we all know today as Portugal, there was a young boy named Fernando Martins de Bojos, and he belonged to one of the most prominent families of the city. When he was 15 years old, his parents visited him to check on him and had a conversation about what he felt being visited often by his parents and friends and asked for a favor. After two years at his request, he was sent to Coimbra. There he began his nine years of intense studying of learning the Gostinian theology and Latin and was ordinated as a priest. During this time, he befriended several friars from the monastery at Olivares. These men belonged to the friars' manor and followed Francis of Assisi. 
Saint Anthony first joined the Augustinian order and left and joined the Franciscan order. And the reason behind this decision was because of the death of the five Franciscan martyrs who preached in Morocco. Soon after joining the friars, Saint Anthony wanted to go to Morocco to continue the mission of the five martyred friars. He was granted permission and sailed to Morocco, but upon his arrival, he fell into sickness. Father Anthony, you are very ill. It may be difficult for you to stay here. I think it will be better if you can travel back to Portugal. You will get better treatment over there. I came to Morocco despite the great works done by you people. And now, my help is not letting me go on with the mission. <coughs> but please, don't worry. I will not be a cause of concern for you if it is God's will. <coughs> I'm going back to Portugal. However, when he was about to go home, the ship was blown off course and landed in Sicily, Italy. St. Anthony recovered at a Franciscan monastery in Messina. St. Anthony lived a life of solitude until the escape from Christian was discovered by accident. The scheduled preacher did not arrive and no one volunteered to fill his role, so the Father Provincial asked St. Anthony to speak about whatever came to his mind. He gave an incredible performance, demonstrating the depth of his knowledge of the scriptures and speaking eloquently and passionately. It was an opportunity to change St. Anthony's calling. In the year of 1226, St. Anthony was appointed as the chief priest of Northern Italy. However, he resigned his position to continue preaching in May. But when St. Anthony was preaching outside of Padua, he became ill. St. Anthony requested to go back to Padua. However, he did not reach his final destination. Instead, he died in Arcella on June 13, at the year of 1231, at the Poor Clare Monastery at the age of 35. St. Anthony de Padua was canonized by Pope Gregory IX on May 30, at the year of 1232, at the Cathedral of Spoleto. In 1946, Pope Pius named St. Anthony de Padua the Doctor of the Church for his knowledge of his scripture and the gift of preaching. one of the most popular patron saints in the Catholic Church. Wildly invoked as the patron saint of lost things, he has been loved and revered since his own time, both for his sympathy for the poor and his erudition and skills as a preacher. simple and profound teaching of the Catholic faith. A preacher and a confessor, we can certainly admit that St. Anthony was, first of all, a tireless preacher and a confessor. To get an idea on how intense of his days, it is enough to quote one of his contemporaries. Anthony would preach, teach, confess all day long until sunset. Often, he would never eat all day long. Did you believe know that St. Anthony de Padua is the patron saint for lost things and people? Yes, we knew this and we just experienced it when we were looking for the article for our project. We prayed to him and we immediately found the article that we were looking for. Can you tell us the miracles that St. Anthony de Padua did? Of course, St. Anthony is one of the Catholic Church's popular saints. A saint for lost things and people. You can use the prayer, Dear Saint Anthony, please come around, insert the name of what is lost, is lost, and it cannot be found. So one of the miracles that Saint Anthony did was when he traveled to the city of Rimini, and when the city leaders had ordered everyone to ignore him, so no one turned up for his homilies, as he wailed outside of the town, he came to the Merakaya River. There he began to address the crowds of not people, but of fish. 
And then he called out, You fish of the river and sea, listen to the words of God because the heretics do not wish to hear it. And then suddenly there were thousands of fish neatly arranged in roses as they were straining to listen to every one of St. Anthony's words. The people of Rumini, seeing this miracle, gathered to listen to St. Anthony. It's amazing how St. Anthony made the fish listen to the words of God. I also heard this amazing miracle that St. Anthony did where three people told the knight who was eating and drinking wine about the saint. But the knight mocked them and made a deal with them that if the glass didn't break, the saint was real. So the knight threw the glass as hard as he can, but to his surprise, the glass didn't break. And after that deal, the knight decided to believe in St. Anthony. We are very inspired by the great miracles that St. Anthony did, and we hope that by sharing with you the miracles of our beloved St. Anthony de Padua, you will grow in appreciation of him and of all the saints. St. Anthony will live a simple life Through prayer and devotion in the silence of the morn you know the next and joy is to serve the poor With a gentle, caring, a loving heart Saint Anthony, a father will be implored Oh, teach us how to live The gospel way of life Your devotion is by the Lord to lead us on the path of life in simplicity, humility, and joy. The Spirit leads you on to preach the word. The visions of fraternity and detachment from all things. You can share with me, me and see you will be gentle love alone. Since Anthony, your father, will be more. Oh, teach us how to live the gospel way of life. We chose to by the Lord to lead us on to the path of life in simplicity, humility, and joy. We thank you, O most holy Trinity, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Tradition the gospel way of life We've chosen by the Lord to lead us all To the path of life In simplicity, humility, and joy To the path of life In simplicity, humility, and perfect joy. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Saint Anthony, glorious worker of wonders, you have assisted me with great kindness and have consoled my soul. I express to you now my heartfelt gratitude and thanks for all your heavenly aid. Accept my prayer and my sincere promise to strive to live always in the love of Jesus Christ and of my neighbor. Continue to shield me with your powerful protection and obtain for me the final grace of being able one day to enter the kingdom of heaven and to join with you in the everlasting praises of God's love and mercy. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us remember the past with gratitude, live the present with enthusiasm, 
and look forward to the future with confidence. Good day everyone! This is Ms. Jubel Aikambusano, the class advisor of St. John Paul II. St. John Paul II is remembered for his successful efforts to end communism, as well as for building bridges with peoples of other faiths, and issuing the Catholic Church first apology for its actions during World War II. To know more about St. John Paul II, let us watch the vlog prepared by St. John Paul II class. Before we start, let us have our opening prayer. Let us wrap ourselves in the holy presence of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, Amen. St. John Paul II, from the window of heaven, grant us your blessing. Bless the church that you have loved, served, and guided, pushing her with courage towards the paths of the world to bring Christ to all and all to Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Are you ready to know about the life of St. John Paul II? St. John Paul II surely lived a truly Christian life. But stay with us to know how a young talented man became a beloved Pope and Saint that we now look up to. Did you know that St. John Paul II's birth name is Carol Joseph Poitua? His birthday is on May 18, 1920 in Wadwis, Poland. He was raised by his mother, Emilia Kaksiroska, and his father, Carol Waitsua. He was the youngest among his three siblings. Carol's childhood was full of suffering. He lost his two siblings and his mother at a young age and was left alone with his father. Carol was baptized a month after his birth, made his first communion at the age of nine and was confirmed at the age of 18. It really is shocking to know that St. John Paul II gone through that as a young age child but also inspired because he managed to pull himself back up despite of all difficulties. That's certainly right, but in mid-1938, what they have and his father left him alone. He was never able to find where he enrolled at the Jagiellonian University. There he studied Polish language, literature, theater, and poetry. He also performed in local theatrical productions, co-founding the Rhapsodic Theater of Krakow. He was known as a vibrant youth, athletic, studious, and a gifted theatrical performer. But another tragedy struck with him. In 1939, Nazi Germany invaded Poland, which led Karl to stop his studies. Karl was compelled to work in order to stay in the nation. He lost his father on February 18, 1941. By the autumn of 1942, he had decided to enter the peace with. On the Feast of All Saints, in 1946, he entered a secret seminary and was ordained alone. After that, he went to Rome to pursue his doctoral study. Cardinal Rostilla was elected Pope on October 16, 1978, and took the name John Paul II. He became the first non-Italian Pope in more than 400 years. He was the 263rd successor to Peter and was to have one of the longest pontificates in the history of the church, lasting nearly 27 years. St. John Paul II was also a prolific writer, and many of the church's riches can be found in his writings. It included 14 encyclicals, 15 apostolic exhortations, 11 apostolic Constitution and 45 hospitality letters. 
He is also a vocal advocate for human rights and uses influence to affect political change. At the age of 84, Pope John Paul II died because of septic shock and cardiovascular collapse in April 2, 2005 at his Vatican City residence. More than 3 million people waited in line to say goodbye to their beloved religious leader at St. Peter's Basilica before his funeral on April 8. He was beatified by Pope Emeritus Benedict XV on May 1, 2011, also on Divine Mercy Sunday. October 22 was chosen as his feast day to remember the anniversary of the liturgical inauguration of his papacy in 1978. On July 5, 2013, the Vatican announced that the Roman Catholic Church would declare Pope John Paul II a saint. During St. John Paul II's time until now, there are characteristics that can evidently be seen in St. John Paul II, and those are considered his virtues. The first virtue is prudence. The virtue of prudence is about making the right decisions from a purely natural perspective. Developing consistently good habits or virtues help to keep our desires always directed in ways that are healthy for us and for our relationships. St. John Paul II is always notable for his bridge of righteousness, where to speak up is what's right for us to do. He showed his prudence in a perspective to end communism in Eastern Europe for being a spiritual inspiration. His messages led to a massive impact among the people in making decisions that are right. We can also read on how they job with the taking it the beach of charity. Charity to the point of forgiving one enemy. Yeah, for those who may ask suffer. Judge today in every age and stretch of life. Patient in tapering and one is shocked by the type of God in the tragedy of history or of one on Petrona Etitan. The one of the famous statement dated by Tate Jump for the Tekken. He wrote a letter to explain how government attitan to the needy is typically bureaucratic rather than kind in nature. He fight for those who do have power to do so. He is a friend of God and he does his very best to depend in knowledge with him. He yet cry with the way, the truth, and the life, and he encourages them as to do the thing. St. John Paul II also exercises the virtue of justice. St. John Paul II understood social justice as promoting the flourishing of every human person, so he confronted the threats posed to social justice and human life by abortion, the death penalty, euthanasia, suicide and murder, racism, economic systems, the arms trade, and the arms race. He advocated for the poor, refugees, migrants, and indigenous people, encouraged dialogue on the ecological question, urge Christians to show special favor to who are poorest, most alone, and most in need. The Pope's teachings on human sexuality were intimately related to his social doctrine. All these issues coalesced in the eye of John Paul II and contributed to the grand struggle between the culture of death and the culture of life. The virtue temperance is also evident to St. John Paul II. Temperance is a virtue similar to self-control. It is applied to all areas of life. Temperance is balance, equability, freedom from extremes in one direction or the other in the way we control ourselves. St. John Paul II is the epitome of a temperate man. 
He has self-control and forgives his enemies instead of revenge and violence. He is humble and calm. Of course, the virtue of faith is the one that's most evident to St. John Paul II. Faith links us with God and makes him become a tangible reality to the perceptions of a person because he, be he insists that God exists and yearns for human conduct and without this human being will perish. He believes that faith is the ultimate reality he will fight to keep Christ at the heart of the humanity. Fortitude is the moral virtue that ensures firmness in difficulties and constancy in the person of good. It strengthens the resolve to resist temptations and to overcome obstacles in the moral life. St. John Paul II fights for the right. He fights for the poor and he is instrumental in bringing down communism in Catholic Eastern Europe. By being the spiritual inspiration behind its downfall and for a catalyst for peaceful revolution in Poland, he was also the first to issue an apology of the Catholic Church actions during World War II. The virtue of hope sustains us at all times with the truth that Jesus will always remain with us even when all the reasons of hope seems absent. The gift of hope leads us to persevere in prayers. Throughout St. John Paul's life, he always had hope in times of trial. He always often tells us to do the same. The Pope's suffering was deepened in 1981 when an assassin shot him at St. Peter's Square. Although his mental acuity never won his physical health began to decline in each successive year after breaking his leg in 1994 instead of turning inward as a premise and allowing the circumstances dedicate his response. St. John Paul turned to God in prayers. Now, we all know who St. John Paul II is. But how do we pray to him? Praying to God and our patron saints is important because it is a way to communicate and be connected with them. Let us pray the prayer of intercession to St. John Paul II. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Blessed Trinity, we thank you for having graced the Church with St. John Paul II and for allowing the tenderness of your fatherly care. The glory of the cross of Christ and the splendor of the Spirit of love to shine through Him. Trusting fully in your infinite mercy, in the mother and the intercession of Mary, He has given us a living image of Jesus, the Good Shepherd. He has shown us that holiness is the necessary measure of ordinary Christian life and is the way of achieving eternal communi communion with you. Grant us, by His intercession, and according to your will, the graces we implore, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Open the doors to Christ, do not be afraid, open wide your hearts to the loving mercy of God, witness to hope and grace. Salvation, pilgrim of faith and love, on the roads of human history, open the doors to Christ, do not be afraid.
to the loving mercy of God. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, Amen. Loving God, who sent us blessed Pope John Paul II as a model of how to live a holy and blessed life. May you guide us to follow his example, to celebrate, to stand up for our faith, to seek dialogue with all faiths and people, to be a seeker of truth, to treat others with dignity and respect, to forgive and ask for forgiveness, to seek you during adverse times, and most of all, to be not afraid. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In one dream, started the foundation of an institute dedicated to taking care of the souls who are most dearly to Jesus. It was love that enabled him to help the children, especially the poor, the weak, and those who are deprived of parental care. Let us get to know him more through this video prepared by the grade 10 students from the class of St. Alfonso Maria Fusco. A compassionate soul. Before we get going, let us first of all ask for God's assistance. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. God of grace, we open our hearts, mind, and soul to adore and worship you. Thank you for allowing us to live in your kingdom, under your presence, and for bringing us together to praise your holy name. Come and join us in our time together, spur us and lead us. This we ask in Jesus' name, Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us discuss the life of St. Alfonso in order for us to get to know him more. St. Alfonso, who was born on March 23, 1839, is a Roman Catholic priest and the founder of St. John the Baptist, or also known as the Baptistan Sisters. Their mission and purpose is to evangelize as well as to educate, promoting the faith among adolescents with a special focus on the underprivileged and abandoned. Saint Alfonso was born as the first of five children at the town of Angri in the province of Salerno. His parents, Aniel Fusco, who was a farmer, and Josefina Scaniva, visited the tomb of Saint Alfonso's Deligary whose intercession was credited with his birth. A redemptorist priest named Saverio Pecorelli assured the couple, You will have a son. You will name him Alfonso. He will become a priest and live the life of blessed Alfonso. When St. Alfonso was a child, his parents sent him to a church school where he was entrusted to the priest, making him dream of becoming one as well. There, he was inspired and often acted the role of priest through singing hymns and building an altar so he could pretend to perform mass. His compassion for children in need were also noticed by his parents during his childhood since he was a mild and gentle character who was responsive to the plight of the poor. At the age of 11, St. 
Saint Alfonso informed his parents that he wanted to become a priest, and so he entered the seminary of Nicera de Pagani on the 5th of November, 1850. In his last years, he said that one night, he had a dream about Jesus the Nazarene, calling him to initiate an institute of sisters and an orphanage for boys and girls as soon as he is ordained. It was a meeting with Madalena Caputo of Angri, a strong-willed woman aspiring to enter religious life, which motivated Father Alfonso to move more quickly in the foundation of the religious institute. On September 25, 1878, Miss Caputo and three other young women met at night in the old and decaying Scarcella House in the Ardenki area of Angri. The young ladies desired to devote themselves to God and His service, as well as to their own sanctification by living a life of poverty, connection with God, and charity in the care and education of unfortunate orphans. The Nazarene Baptistine Sisters Congregation was thus established. Saint Alfonso led the institute with wisdom and caution. He looked after the sisters and orphans like a loving father would. At a time when education was a privilege reserved for the wealthy and denied to the poor and the women, Father Alfonso was willing to make sacrifices. He wanted the children to live a peaceful life as devoted Christians, and the sisters to begin their studies so they could teach the poor. the night of February 5, 1910, St. Alfonso felt unwell. He then requested to receive the sacraments on the morning of February 6. After blessing his own daughter sweeping around his bed with quivering hands, he said, Lord, I thank you. I have been a useless servant. Turning to the sisters, he says, I shall remember you from the throne of God. I will always pray for you. And he then slept peacefully in the Lord. On the 12th of February 1976, Saint Alfonso was declared venerable by Pope Paul VI, who noted that he had lived a model life of heroic qualities. On October 7, 2001, Pope John Paul II beatified Fusco. The date of his canonization was confirmed after it was formalized during the Cardinal's meeting on June 20, 2016. On October 16, 2016, Pope Francis canonized Fusco as a Roman Catholic saint. On February 6, the date of his death, his liturgical feast is commemorated. Spouse of Christ is the name that St. Alfonso preferred to refer to his sisters. He often identified them as the Brides of the Nazarene. He accepted that they are named Baptistines of the Nazarene to give emphasis that they are of the Nazarene and that they belong to him. Jesus is a remarkably compassionate person. In imitation of Jesus, St. Alfonso was always ready to help everyone, including the poor orphans, the outcasts, and even those little thieves who steal in order to survive. In his heart, there was a kindness that leaves him restless every time. He desired to take them off the streets, educate them, and shape their morals. This compassion extended to the many little boys and girls who were orphaned and without parental care. The Baptist scenes work for the glory of God in the service of their neighbor through evangelization. Education and human promotion of youth, especially the poor, abandoned, and at risk, so that they would become promoters of justice and peace in charity for a better future for humanity. St. Alfonso is a pure spirit who is deeply concerned about children, particularly the most vulnerable. He is always concerned about the youth. 
and he wishes to teach and mold their morals in order for the children to grow up peacefully and as a devoted Christian in order to prepare their hearts to receive the Lord. He prays for the people, particularly for the youth and his sisters. He worships the Lord on behalf of the children in their house of providence. And he also requests for blessings to help them. There are a lot more intercessions of St. Alfonso that has not been disclosed or elaborated. St. Alfonso inspired and taught us that we should treat one another like brothers and sisters, most especially by being compassionate and merciful to our brethren. There is no exception, so let us always remember that we are all a big family. We are all God's children. Do you see these children on the streets? Have you walked the pavements where they sleep? Do you feel their hands when you give them alms? Did you ever give them bread to eat? Have you seen their homes washed by the flood? Mother tightly holds her child. Do you hear the wind of the raging storm? Can you tell them where it's coming from? Let us show our love and mercy. We show kindness and you mean. I hope that just like St. Alfonso, we can all provide mercy and compassion to everyone who's in need, especially the children. Let us now end this through a closing prayer. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Lord God, source of strength to all saints, you called St. Alfonso and the sisters to live in total faith accepting the sufferings and hardships to fulfill your commandment of love. Let their prayers help us to keep our faith and total commitment to the end of our days so that we may see your face and live with all your saints and angels. Through our Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ, one God in unity with the Holy Spirit. Amen. St. Alfonso Maria Fusco, pray for us.